Come to a comfortable seated position. Cross-legged if you can. Make sure you're sitting on some kind of support, a blanket, a uh, folded towel. And pull the buttocks flush back a little bit. So you feel like you're sitting more on the buttock bones. Take your hands to the floor or the support, press down, keeping the hips grounded, the legs heavy. Make the chest light. Lift the rib cage towards the ceiling. And as you lift the chest and the rib cage upwards, soften the shoulders, let them descend slightly downwards. Keeping the lift of the chest, go ahead and bring the backs of the hands to the thighs or to the knees. And now with the head level over the shoulders and the chin roughly parallel to the floor, close your eyes from top to bottom. With the eyes closed, our other senses get stronger. Bring your awareness to your sense of touch. Go back to the base of the pose, re-relax the legs, soften the inner groins, and begin to observe the buttock bones themselves. Feel that they're balanced, left and right. And from that balanced grounding, draw the lower back slightly in, take the navel slightly towards the spine, and lift again the rib cage and the chest towards the ceiling. From there, soften again the shoulders. Let the tops of the shoulders and the flesh of the upper back chest descend towards the floor. Maintaining this lift, this awareness in the spine and in the chest. Begin to relax the muscles of the face, soften the forehead, the eyebrows, the temples. With your eyes closed, let the gaze go gently downwards towards the floor or towards the nose. And keep the muscles around and behind the eyes soft. Relax the cheeks, soften the jaw and the tongue. Let the tongue rest at the bottom of the mouth and release it all the way down into the chest. Maintaining again the lift of the chest and now the passivity and quietness of the face. Observe the breath and without force or strain, let your inhalations become a little bit more full. Let your exhalations be a little bit more complete, releasing the residual air. What BKS Iyengar would refer to as the echo breath that lies at the bottom of the lungs during unconscious breathing. Observe the texture of the breath. Feel as it comes in through the nose and down the throat into the very center of the body, the cool air drying the sinuses, cooling the very center of the body. And then that air warms up and on the exhalation, you feel that warm, moist air softening and humidifying the back of the throat, the sinuses. Be the witness to the sensations of the breath. Now bring the palms together at your chest in prayer. Let the skin of the outer thumbs gently touch the area of the sternum and lift the sternum with the outer thumbs. Feel the front chest be lifted by the hands themselves. Continue to descend the shoulders down the back and bow the head forward, surrendering the ego of the mind to the wisdom of the heart. Lift the head, release the hands, and gently open the eyes. Good, now take note of which way your legs are crossed. Change the cross of the legs. Again, just for a moment, take the hands to the floor, press down, lift the chest up. Now take your arms forward, interlace the fingers, straightening the arms, and for a moment, take the knuckles to rest on the crown of the head. Let the hands rest there with the palms facing up. Keep the chest lifting in again. Soften the shoulders. Really relax the shoulders. Let them descend downwards. Now keep that softness in the shoulders as you begin to straighten out the arms. Barangulyasana, bound fingers pose. Lift the chest. Straighten the arms. Let the shoulders descend slightly. Now observe that the thumb side of the hands, the inner wrists, tends to get short. Reach the root of the thumbs, the inner wrists, more towards the ceiling. Keep the arms straight. Lift the chest. Good, turn the hands over, change the interlace of the fingers, let the knuckles again. Start at the crown of the head as a way to sort of relax the shoulders. Feel that release, that softness of the shoulders, and maintaining that, begin to straighten out the arms. Pull the outer elbows in, lift the chest again, keep the shoulders descending, and re-release those inner wrists, the root of the thumbs, towards the ceiling. Keep the chest lifting, the shoulders descending. Good, turn the hands over. Releasing out. 
Extend the legs. Dandasana, staff pose. Take the hands to the floor of the support. Have the feet slightly apart. Take the hands, pressing them into the floor, lift the chest up, let the tops of the shoulders descend slightly downwards once again. Now really straighten out the legs, and as I often ask, point the toes towards your face and release the heels as far away from the buttock bones as you can. Open up the backs of the legs, press the thighs down, the backs of the knees, the calves, and the heels into the floor. Keep pressing the heels into the floor, begin to extend through the mounds of the feet. Press the big toe mounds forward, spread the toes. Stretch the skin from the big toe mounds towards the outer toes. Take the lower back in, lift the chest up. You could separate the legs, Upavista Konasan. Again, extend through the heels first. Lengthen from your inner groins towards those inner heels, reach the heels away from you. Now press the thighs, the backs of the knees, and the heels into the floor heavily. And now begin to extend through the mounds of the feet. Observe that the feet are not turning out to the sides. If your outer toes are pointing outwards instead of up towards the ceiling, roll the inner groins and inner knees down to make the outer toes point more directly upwards towards the ceiling. Keep the chest lifting, the shoulders descending, press the thighs down, bring the legs back together. Come to child's pose, Adho Mukha Virasana. Come to facing down on your mat. Bring the big toes together, keep the knees apart, allow the body, the torso, to sort of fall between the thighs if you need some support. If the head doesn't come to the floor, bring the floor up to your head with support of a blanket, towel, block. Extend the arms forward, spread the fingers wide, keep the hands about shoulder width apart, and begin to bring your awareness to the extremities of the body. Instead of being sort of stuck in your head, begin to feel the texture of the mat underneath the hands, the fingers. Spread the fingers wide. Feel the fingertips, the knuckles, the root of the fingers, the palms, pressing into the mat. Keep the arms straight, roll the triceps slightly down. Work on extending the sternum, the front chest, more forward, away from the hips. And feel again the shoulders descending slightly down the back. Soften the neck, soften the throat. Now keeping the hands about shoulder width apart, we're going to move to Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Tuck the toes under, keeping the feet about hip width to shoulder width apart, straighten out the arms, straighten out the legs, Adho Mukha Svanasana. For a moment, grab the edges of the mat and use that as leverage to find more length and extension in the torso by pressing the thighs, the legs back. Push the tops of the thighs towards the back of the room, towards the wall behind you. Awaken the legs. Open up the backs of the knees. The kneecaps should be lifting. The thighs, the quadriceps should be firm. Press the thighs back to find length and extension in the spine. Straighten out the arms. Roll the triceps slightly more towards the floor to open up the upper back chest. Keep pushing the thighs back, soften the neck. If you can, replace the hands without losing that space that you found through the work of grabbing the mat. Spread the fingers wide, the palms open, the fingertips spread wide. For more adhesion, for more leverage, again, to help push the thighs back. Keep the neck soft, keep the head releasing towards the floor. Now keeping the legs straight, begin to walk the hands back towards the feet to standing forward bend. Keeping the legs straight, take your hands to your knees and shins or shins for a moment. Look forward, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward bend. Press the thighs back, reach your sternum towards the wall in front of you. And then from there, lower down, standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Cross your arms, take your hands to your elbows. Observe the weight of the feet on the floor. Do you feel like you're falling forward? Does your weight of your body go more to the mounds of the feet and the toes? If that's the case, press the thighs, press the shins back more. Inner groins in particular. And as you firm the thighs and slightly draw up through the inner legs, observe that there might be a little more release in the side chest, the rib cage towards the floor. Change the cross of the arms.
Breathe. Keep the legs straight, don't let them give up. Continue to draw the kneecaps up, the thighs, the quadriceps should be firm. Now to come out, take your hands to your waist. Inhale and slowly come up. Now come to standing. For today's Tadasana, try to have the feet together if you can. Mounds of the feet and the heels touching. If this doesn't work, you can have your feet slightly apart, but keep them roughly parallel on the inner edges. Now lift all of your toes if you can, all 10 of them if you got them. Lift them all up, straighten out the legs, and notice when you lift the toes up that you get arches in the feet. The, the, the arches in the feet become much more pronounced. Also observe that the shins begin to push back a little bit, the muscles of the calves awaken. Keep the kneecaps lifting now, keep the thighs lifting, and as you do all of this with the toes lifting, take the buttocks flush slightly towards the floor. Maintain the activity of the legs as you lower the toes back down. Keep the buttocks flush descending towards the floor, lift the chest up, again let the shoulders descend slightly downwards. Straighten out the arms, extend all the way through the fingertips. Tadasana standing mountain pose. Feel the feet contacting the floor. Observe the heels, observe the outer arches of the feet, the outer edges of the feet, the mounds of the feet, the toes again, feel them grounding towards the floor. We're gonna to go to tree pose, Vrikshasana. If you feel like your balance isn't so great today, you can go near a wall. Otherwise, starting again in Tadasana, if you're at the wall, you can start with your left side towards the wall. Turn your right leg out to the side. Place that right foot high up on the inner left thigh. Press the foot into the inner left thigh. Press the outer left thigh back into the foot. Come to prayer pose if you can. Go back to that left foot. Feel the left foot pressing into the floor. Feel the heel, the outer arch of the foot, the outer edge of the foot, the mound of the foot. Communicating with the floor to maintain the balance. Keep the chest lifting. Keep that left leg straight, descend both buttocks flush as you did in Tadasana, take the arms upward, Vahastasana, upward hands pose. Keep the chest lifting, maintain again Tadasana in that left leg. Let the shoulders descend slightly. If you're able to bring the palms together without the arms bending, you're welcome to bring the palms to touching into prayer. Lift the sternum towards the ceiling. Let the shoulders keep releasing downwards. Good, separate the palms. Back to standard prayer pose. Hands to your waist, take the right knee forward, release and come out. Tadasana once again, find your center. If you're at the wall, you can turn around. From the hip, turn that left leg out. Go ahead and place it high up on the inner right thigh. Press that left foot into the inner right thigh. Press the outer right thigh back into the foot. Get a sense of compactness there to create stability. Straighten that right leg. Press the left foot into the inner right thigh. Lift both sides of the chest up, prayer pose, take the arms up, Ord Vahastasan. Re-straighten that right leg, lift the chest up, let the shoulders again descend slightly towards the floor. Keep that compactness of the left foot into the right thigh. If you can keep the arms straight and bring the palms together, you're welcome to do that. Keep the chest lifting. Like a tree, grow towards the ceiling, upwards. Good, come back to prayer pose. Hands to your waist, take that left knee forward, release and out. Tadasana. Trikonasana, triangle pose. If you have blocks, uh, you can place them on either side of the back half of your mat. Otherwise, you can just use your, take your hand to your knee or shin. Separate the feet four to five feet apart. For a moment, just have your hands on your waist. Lift the chest, drop the shoulders down. Turn your left toes slightly in. Turn the entire right leg out from the thigh, the knee, the shin, the toes should all be turning out about 90 degrees in the right leg. 
Now keep both legs straight. Again, the kneecap should be lifting, the thighs, the quadriceps should be firm. For a moment, take your arms upward, Bahastasana, to find that lift and lightness of the chest. Take the arms out to the sides for a moment with the palms facing up. Observe that when the palms are facing up, those inner elbows tend more to aim towards the ceiling. Keep those inner elbows up, but turn the hands over. Keeping the legs straight, keeping the arms extended. Take your right hip towards your left hip and reach your right hand away from you as you go into the pose. Finally, take your right hand down to the shin, the knee, the ankle, the block, the support. Keep both legs straight once again. Continue to work at trying to take your right hip deeper in towards your left hip and at the same time take your right rib cage away from the right hip. Take the right thigh and buttock more forward, more underneath you to turn the chest slightly higher towards the ceiling. Broaden the arms away from each other and drop the tops of the shoulders slightly down the back. To look up towards that left hand, turn from the back of the head to keep the neck and the throat soft. Both legs again straight. To come out, pull from the left hand. Inhale, come up. Hands to your waist. Feet parallel. Now take your right toes in. Take your whole left leg out. Left thigh, left knee, shin, foot. All turning out about 90 degrees. Take the arms up just for a moment. To find that lift and length in the spine, that lift in the chest, take the arms out to the sides of the palms up. Keep the inner elbows aiming more towards the ceiling as you turn the hands over. Again, keep both legs straight. Press that outer right heel into the floor. When you go into the pose to the left, take your left hip towards your right hip. Take your left hand away from you. Reach the left hand away from you. Find the shin, the block, the support. Let the right arm go directly towards the ceiling. Now re-straighten out the legs. Take your left thigh and buttock more forward, more underneath you and turn the abdomen, the belly, the chest, more upwards towards the ceiling. Reach that left rib cage away from the left hip, but drop the tops of the shoulders slightly down for clarity. To look up at the right hand, turn from the back of the head to keep the jaw, the back of the neck soft. Again, both legs straight. Turn the abdomen and the chest up. To come out, press the outer right heel into the floor, pull from the right hand, come up and out. Take your hands to your waist. Feet parallel. Keep the legs apart. Breathe, lift the chest. Again, left toes in, turn the entire right leg out. Take the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Keep pressing through the outer left heel. Bend your right leg by releasing from the inner right groin to the inner right knee. Keeping the arms up for a moment, sort of in Virabhadrasana 1 position, to keep that lift and length of the chest. Keep the chest lifting, keep the palms up again, take the arms out to the sides. Don't change the position of the arms, just turn the hands over for Virabhadrasana, Warrior 2 pose. Make sure that your right knee is directly over your right heel. Keep the chest lifting, the shoulders descending, and we're going to go directly to side angle pose. Take your left hand to your waist, right elbow to the right knee. Pause here for a moment. As you did in triangle pose, take your right hip towards the left hip. Pressing the elbow into the knee, reach your right rib cage a little bit away from the right hip. Find length on that right side. Press the elbow into the knee, turn the abdomen, the chest more towards the ceiling. Ground that left foot down, outer left heel, and then take the left arm up and over. Side angle pose. Again, as you did in a triangle pose, take your uh, right thigh and buttock forward, more underneath you, to help turn the abdomen and the chest more towards the ceiling. Those who want to go deeper can take your right hand down to the block or to the floor. Ground the outer left foot, extend through the entire flank of the left side. Look underneath your own left armpit towards the ceiling if you can. To come out, press through the back leg. Inhale, come up. Hands to your waist once again. Straighten down right leg, feet parallel. Directly to the other side. Take the arms up. Right toes in, turn the entire left leg out 90 degrees. Keep pressing the right outer heel into the floor. Ground that outer right foot. Keep the chest lifting. Bend your left leg. Releasing from the inner left groin towards the inner left knee to bend that left leg. Get the left 
knee directly over the left heel. Keep the chest lifting, take the arms out to the sides with the palms facing up. Inner elbow should continue to aim towards the ceiling a little bit as you turn the hands over for Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2 pose. Lift the chest, drop the shoulders. Going to side angle pose, take your uh, right hand to your waist, left elbow to the left knee. Pause here for a moment. As you did in triangle pose, take your left thigh and buttock more forward, more underneath you as you reground that outer right foot. Take that left hip a little towards the right hip, pressing the elbow into the knee, reach your left rib cage a little away from that left hip. And now keep hitting that left thigh forward, turn the chest, the belly, the chest, the abdomen more towards the ceiling, ground the right foot, take the right hand up and overhead. Straighten that right arm. Keep pressing the elbow and the knee for leverage. Turn the abdomen more towards the ceiling. Ground the right foot. Extend through the entire right flank of the body. Those who want to go deeper, take the left hand down to the block or to the floor. But observe the loss that happens sometimes as you get deeper into the pose. Try to regain some of that space that you might have lost as you move to deeper. And again, look underneath your own right armpit, if you can, to look towards the ceiling. To come out, press to the back leg, inhale, come on up, make the feet parallel, and walk the feet together. Tadasana. Let Tadasana be a restorative pose. Relax the face, catch your breath. Again, take your hands to your waist, separate your feet. Turn those left toes well in, turn the entire right leg out once again. Lift that left heel up, turn it farther back. Have the chest so it is facing in the same direction as the right foot, right toes. We're going to go to revolved triangle pose, Parvrita Trikonasana. Keeping your right hand on your waist, take your left arm up. Now think about that left foot. Ground that left outer heel into the floor and already begin to get long through the entire left side of the body. Keep grounding through that back leg. Press that left shin back again. As you begin to bend forward, reaching that left arm forward, take the left hand of the inside or outside of the right foot, knee, shin, block if you need it, if you have it. Keeping that right hand on the waist, begin to turn the chest back. Revolve the torso. Keep that left leg straight. Keep the right leg straight. Draw the right hip slightly back as the left inner knee left inner shin goes back and as you fortify the hips rotate the chest from left to right take that right arm up towards the ceiling so the torso at this point is is rotating broaden the arms away from each other to deepen the twist of the pose and then to come out simply turn towards the floor again take your right hand to the waist turn look towards the floor for a little sense of stability and grounding Press that left foot into the floor, inhale, come up. Hands to your waist, directly to the other side. Turn your right toes in, turn your left leg out. Lift your right heel up, turn it farther back so that the entire body can turn and face the front leg. Continue to press that right shin, right inner knee back to feel sort of that right outer hip roll slightly forward so the hips get a little more square. Take your right arm up, ground the right heel into the floor, get long through the entire right flank, right side of the body. Keeping the left hand on the waist, dive that right arm forward. Keep grounding that back leg. Dive the right arm forward, take it down the inside or outside of the foot on a block or on the shin. Right hand towards that left leg, left foot. Keeping the left hand on the waist, Continue to press that right shin back and begin to rotate the torso. Revolve the trunk of the body. Press the left thigh back. Press the right inner knee, right inner shin back. Turn the chest, take that left arm up towards the ceiling. Revolved triangle pose, Paravrita Trikonasana. Observe that the back leg, the grounding of the back legs, increases the stability of the pose and helps you rotate more. Turn the belly from right to left, the chest, and then finally to sort of open in the upper chest, broaden the arms away from each other. Take your left hand to your waist. 
to come out, turn towards the floor. Grounding that back leg, inhale, come on back up. Make the feet parallel, walk the feet together. Pause in Tadasana. So the final standing pose we're gonna do is Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. Again, if your balance is uh, feeling a little precarious today, you can have your back to the wall if you need it. Otherwise, separate your feet. Hands on your waist for a moment. Turn your left toes in, turn the entire right leg out. Right thigh, right knee, right shin, right toes, all pointing in the same direction. Now keeping your left hand on your waist, go ahead and bend your right leg. Take your right hand down to the block or to the floor. As you did way back in triangle pose, take your right thigh and buttock a little more underneath you. Turn the chest already. Before you even go into the pose, turn the chest more upwards towards the ceiling. And now step the back leg in. Move the right hand a little forward. Take that left leg up, straighten out the right leg. The hand, the right hand should be directly underneath the right shoulder. Keeping both legs straight. Try to get the left foot to be a little bit higher than the hip. Now, again, as you did in triangle pose, straighten out the right leg, take the right thigh a little bit underneath you. Turn the abdomen and the chest more towards the ceiling and awaken the left leg. Lengthen from your left inner groin towards your left heel. Get the sense that you're trying to stand on the left leg as much as on the right. Turn the chest up. If you feel stable, you can take the left arm up towards the ceiling. Keep lengthening the right rib cage away from the right thigh. The right thigh should sort of press towards the bone. Right rib cage away. Turn the chest up. Again, let the shoulders drop a little bit away from the ears. If you'd like to look up, turn from the back of the head. Look towards that left hand. Keep that left leg awake. Keep the right leg straight and grounded. To come out of the pose, take your left hand to your waist. Bend the right leg. Lower the left foot to the floor. Inhale, come up and out. Go directly to the other side. Right toes in, left leg out. Go ahead and bend your left leg. Keeping your right hand on your waist, take your left hand down to the floor. The block, whatever, if you're using support, of course. But again, observe that the chest immediately wants to turn towards the floor. Hit that left thigh, and before you even entered the pose, hit the left thigh and buttock more forward underneath you. Turn the abdomen and the chest more towards the ceiling. Maintaining this, step the back leg in, move the left hand a little bit away from the left foot, and enter the pose. Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. Straighten out the left leg. Make sure that the left hand is directly below the left shoulder. Straighten out that right leg as you did in triangle pose. Take that left thigh and buttock more underneath you. Stand on that left leg and turn the belly, the abdomen, more towards the ceiling. Try to stack your, your pelvis more over that left leg, more over that femoral head, the femur bone. Awaken the right leg. Reach from your inner right groin towards your inner right heel as if you're trying to stand on that right leg as much as on the left. Keep turning the chest towards the ceiling. If you feel stable, take the right arm up. Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. If you'd like to look up, turn from the back of the head, look towards our right hand. Soften the shoulders a little bit away from the ears. And then come out, bend that left leg, lower the right foot to the floor, right hand to your waist. Inhale, come up and out. Feet parallel, walk the feet together. Prasarita Padottanasana. Separated legs, forward bend. If you are less flexible, I would recommend maybe having a chair. We we're gonna be in this pose for a little bit. You might wanna have a little head support. Uh, those of you who can bring your head to the floor, you won't need anything. Separate your legs nice and wide, slightly wider than they were for a triangle pose. But in this case, make sure that the outer edges of the feet are parallel with the edges of the mat. So your toes might need to turn in a little bit. Your heels might need to turn out a little bit. Have your hands on your waist. Straighten out the legs. For a moment, lift your toes up again. Feel the mounds of the feet pressing. Spread the toes wide. Lower the toes back down. Keeping the legs straight. The hands in the waist, take your elbows a little towards each other to broaden the upper chest. Lift the chest and sternum up. Keeping the legs straight, begin to bend forward. 
Those who are using chair support can take your hands to the chair. Otherwise, you can take your hands to the floor if you're able to. Have the hands about shoulder width apart and directly below your shoulders. The feet directly in line with the hips. You should feel like the weight of the body is still remaining primarily on the feet. Now press the thighs, the musculature of the thighs, the quadriceps into the bone, roll the inner groins slightly back towards the wall behind you as you take your side ribs and your sternum, even your armpit chest forwards. The thighs are pressing back. You're trying to lengthen the spine by reaching the chest and sternum forward. Let the arms do some of the work as well. Draw the shoulders slightly down the back to sort of scoop that upper chest even more forwards. Keep pressing the thighs back. Arda Prasarita Padottanasana, half separated foot forward bend pose. Keep pressing the thighs back. Those of you who are using some form of support, you can bring your head to that support, the seat of a chair or something in between. If you're able to take your head to the floor, take your head to the floor, walk your hands in line with the feet and still shoulder width apart. This will make your forearms roughly parallel with each other and perpendicular to the floor. Keeping the legs straight, again, maintain the weight of the body on the feet. Don't let the weight fall towards the head. The head should feel supported, not supporting. Draw the outer ankles slightly in. Press the inner knees, inner groins, roll them back towards the wall behind you so you feel to some extent as if the buttocks flesh itself is broadening away from each other. The right buttocks flesh going up to the right, the left up and to the left. And feel that feeding in to the release of the torso more towards the floor. Wherever you are, again let the shoulders go slightly away from the ears. Feel the flesh of the upper back chest go more towards the hips. Soften the face, soften the throat, relax the jaw, relax the tongue. Embrace that state of inversion. When you begin to come out, reground the legs. Using the hands to help you come out, walk them slightly forward, press them into the floor, straighten out the arms to come to the Arda position once again. Reach the chest and sternum forward as the thighs press back. Now to come out from here, heel toe the feet in towards each other. Walk the feet in a little closer. And then from here, you can gently come up, come to standing once again. So we're going to move to some seated poses now. Come to sitting on uh, some kind of support, uh, towels, blankets, whatever you used at the beginning of class. Have your legs extended first. We're going to go to Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose, sometimes known as cobbler's pose or butterfly's pose. Take your right hand directly behind your right knee from the inside and find that ropey tendon behind that right knee and grab, sort of tuck the fingers underneath that tendon, pull the knee out to the side. Do the same thing with your left leg. Use that left hand, grab the inside of the back knee, pull the knee from inside out from the tendon. And then pull the feet in a little closer to the inner groins. The feet should be touching soles of the feet. Depending on your flexibility, you may decide that you need a little more support. Those of you whose knees are quite high up, you'll notice that there's more release of the inner groins if you sit up a little bit higher. Those who are more flexible can lower down if they like. But wherever you are, again, make sure that it's just the buttocks that are on the support, the legs are off. Take your hands to the floor, press down, lift the chest up. Push the outer edges of the feet in towards each other to release the inner groins away from each other. Take the lower back in, find that lift of the chest. Use uh, the pressing of the hands to complement that lengthening of the chest. Now, if you're able to, take your hands around your feet. If this is difficult, a strap or even a necktie uh, or a towel will work as well. Take the hands around the feet. Use this as leverage to draw the lower back in even more. Release, again, the inner groins away from, from each other. Keep the sternum and the chest lifting, the shoulders descending. Breathe. Gently release. 
Take the hands to the outsides of the knees to help bring the legs back together. Keep the inner groin soft and extend the legs. For this next pose, you may need to have a strap or a towel or a necktie, something uh, that, that can have the same function as a strap. We're going to go to Jhana Shirshasan, head to extended legs pose. Having the legs straight and slightly apart, as you did before with Baddha Konasana, take your right hand directly behind your right knee, sort of scoop behind that knee, pull the knee from inside out, take the leg out to the side. In this case, begin to pull the heel towards the inner groins. If you're more flexible, you may find that you can pull your right heel to your right inner groin. If this is difficult, you can have it more somewhere in between or more towards that left inner groin. Try to turn the top of that right foot a little to the floor so the uh, sole of the foot aims a little more towards the ceiling. Press both hands into the floor, lift the chest up, and begin to turn from the very base of the spine. Turn below the navel from right to left. So now hopefully your chest is more in line with that uh, left leg. Come forward, take your left hand, the outside of the left knee, take your right hand with the strap, if you need it, towel, something, to connect to that left foot. So now your right hand will grab the left foot. Your left hand is in the outside of the left knee. And before you begin to bend forward, press that left hand down and notice that you lift the chest more and the torso which turns, rotates a little more in line with that front leg. Keep pressing the left hand down as you begin to pull with the right hand. Press with the left hand, pull with the right to come forward so that the chest comes more parallel to the floor as it lowers towards our left legs. Take both hands to the foot if you can. Draw the lower back in, lift the chest and sternum forward and begin to bend towards that left leg. Draw the elbows up and away from each other to keep the chest broad. And in your mind's eye, visualize yourself from above and look to see that the chest is even and parallel with the floor. Keep that left leg straight. Inhale, come up. For a moment, just take the arms up to sort of neutralize and lengthen the spine. Hands back to the floor. Take your right hand to the outside of the right knee. Bring that leg in. Other side. Scoop the left hand behind that left knee, inside. Pull the knee from inside out and then pull the heel towards its own inner groin or somewhere in between the groins. Both hands to the floor for a moment. Straighten out that right leg. Take the lower back in, lift the chest. Now begin to turn a little bit towards the straight leg. Take your right hand to the outside of the right knee, take your left arm up for a moment and then dive that left arm forward with the strap, towel, whatever you're using. Connect that left hand to the right foot. Start by pressing the right hand into the floor. Notice that the chest lifts and you'll feel your left rib cage draw in a little bit more. Keep pressing that right hand down as you pull with the left hand. Press the right hand down, pull with the left. Press with the right, pull with the left as you come forward. And then once you get close to that leg, take both hands to the foot. Let the left, the bent leg, thigh, buttock release away, back as you extend your left rib cage a little more forwards. Draw the elbows up and away from each other to keep clarity in the front chest. And again observe, sort of as if you were looking at yourself from above, is the chest parallel to the floor or is that sort of left back rib cage higher? See if you can draw the left back rib cage in so that the chest is more parallel to the floor. Breathe, keep the right leg straight. Janu Shishasan. Gently inhale, come up. Take the arms up again for a moment. Hands to the floor. Take your left hand to the outside of the knee. Extend. Press both hands into the floor. Lift the chest. Marich Yasana 1. So you're sitting again on the support with your legs extended. Go ahead and bend your left leg. Take your left foot to the floor, and you can use both hands to sort of pull that left shin in a little bit. 
Take both hands to the floor for a moment. Now, if you notice that it's difficult to keep the buttocks grounded while that left leg is bent and the foot is on the floor, sit up a little bit higher until there is some sense of grounding and support underneath the hips. Straighten the right leg, press the hands into the floor, lift the chest up. Now take both arms up towards the ceiling, begin to extend forward with your left arm on the inside of the left knee, take both hands to the foot. Again, use that towel, use that strap. Both hands to the right foot. Begin with the Arda position. Continue to press that left foot into the floor. Keep the right leg straight. Take the lower back in, lift the chest and sternum up, and let the shoulders descend slightly down. And then from here, begin to bend forward again by drawing the elbows away from each other as you did in Janu Shirshasana. Draw the elbows up and away from each other, reach the chest, and the inside of that left leg, extend it towards the right leg, both sides of the chest, left rib cage as well as the right. Notice that that left foot tends to get light, the left knee wants to roll out a little bit, ground that left foot into the floor, stand on it a little bit as you extend both sides of the chest, bending forward towards that right leg. And then inhale and come up, and as you did in Janu Shirsasana, release the hands, take the arms up for a moment. Lift and lighten the chest. Take both hands to the floor, straighten out that left leg. Dandasana for a moment. And now bend your right leg. Pull the right heel in close to the right buttock. Both hands to the floor for a moment. Straighten out the left leg, lift both sides of the chest up. Take both arms up. Lift the rib cage. Begin to extend forward, dive forward, taking that right rib cage to the inside of the right knee, right arm to the inside of the right leg. Take that right hand towards uh, the left foot, both hands to the foot, strap, towel, whatever you're using. And again, observe that that bent leg, knee, and foot tends to get, the knee falls out, the foot gets light. Press the inner edge of that right foot into the floor to ground that right foot. Draw the elbows away from each other and up to extend the chest and find broadness as you bend forward towards that left leg. Breathe. As always, feel the shoulders going away from the ears. Tops of the shoulders descending down the back as you extend the sternum towards that left leg. Inhale, come up. Take the arms up for a moment. Lift the chest. Good, take the hands to the floor. Straighten out that right leg. Don Dawson. Keep the chest lifting. Now separate your feet nice and wide as you did near the beginning of class. Upa Vista Karnasan. Straighten out the legs and again observe that the outer edges of the feet are pointing directly up towards the ceiling. Press the thighs down, press the backs of the knees down, press the heels down. Push the hands into the floor to lift the chest up. Now we're going to twist towards the right, but I want you to think more about the left thigh. Press the very top of the left thigh down. Take your right hand more directly behind you. Take your left hand between the legs. Keep pressing that left thigh into the floor as you twist towards the right. Turn the belly, turn the abdomen from left to right. Turn the chest. And notice as you twist that the upper chest closes because the shoulders are drawing towards each other. Broaden the collarbones away from each other to keep the chest open. Continue to ground that left leg as you look over your right shoulder. And release. Other side. Left hand behind you, right hand between the legs. Think about that right thigh. Really press that right thigh heavily into the floor to ground that right hip. Lift both sides of the chest up. Twist towards the left. Turn the belly from right to left. And as you twist, you'll notice again that upper chest begins to close a little bit. Broaden the collarbones away from each other so that the shoulder blades draw in towards each other and sort of complement that deepening of the twist of the upper chest. Look over that left shoulder as you ground that right thigh. Release and come out. Keeping the legs separate and extended, press the hands into the floor. Upavista Konasan. Lift the chest. Good, bring the legs back together. The next pose we're gonna do is Chatush Padasana, four-footed animal pose, more commonly known as bridge pose. Come to lying down on your backs on the mat. 
bend your legs, take your feet to the floor, take the heels close to the buttocks and the feet about hip width apart. Try to feel that the outer edges of the feet, of course you can't see your feet from where you are, try to feel that the outer edges of the feet are even parallel. And when we do this pose, it's important that we don't turn the head or press the head into the floor. The work comes more from the arms and from the legs. But begin to press the feet down, lift the hips up, and roll the outer shoulders underneath you. The hands should be either holding onto the ankles or onto the strap around the ankles. And the arms should be straight. Rewrap the outer shoulders, the flesh of the outer shoulders, more underneath you. Press the feet down and press the upper outer arms down. The feet press down to lift the hips up. The arms press down to complement the lift of the chest. Again, keep the throat soft. Don't push the head into the floor and don't turn the head. Observe that the knees aren't sort of falling away from each other. Let the inner groins descend slightly towards the floor as the tailbone ascends towards the ceiling. You should feel as if the tops of the buttock flesh are going towards the backs of the knees. And the upper outer arms, the upper outer shoulders are pressing into the floor to feed for more lift in the upper chest. Keep the throat soft, keep the jaw soft. Relax the face. To come out, release the buttocks flesh towards the heels, towards the backs of the knees, to sort of release the lower back as you come out of the pose. The next pose we're going to do is legs up the wall pose, Viparita Karani. Those of you who have some kind of support and you'd like to have your hips on some support, you're welcome to do that. You'll take that support directly to the wall. If you prefer to be flat on the floor, you're welcome to do that. Either way, you sort of sit sideways along the wall and then lie down sideways and get your hips and buttocks as close to the wall as you can and then from there, roll onto your back and swing the legs up. Try to have the buttocks as close to the wall as you can so that the legs are more vertical. The arms can be slightly away from each other or can be placed in sort of the goal post position. Straighten out the legs. Try to have the legs together if you can. Now maintain some sense of integrity in the legs. We are heading towards a more restorative pose, but for the moment, keep the legs straight. And from your vantage point, being able to look at your own legs, try to look to see that the legs are even and that they're sort of a reflection of each other. The right foot looks like the left foot and vice versa. Observe that there's an even lengthening in the inner and outer legs. The name of this pose is Viparita Karani, and that actually translates to inverted lake pose. And the idea is that we're sort of changing the direction of the fluids of the body. And in this case, you can sort of imagine that your area of the abdomen, the belly, is a pool of water. It should feel soft and fluid there and receptive. This very slight, subtle activity of the legs encourages the grounding of the hips and the softening of the abdomen. But as you're here, also relax the face, relax the throat. Embrace the introduction of more fresh arterial blood to the area of the upper body, the head. Soften the tongue. Let the breath begin to quiet down. Now from here, we're gonna move directly to Shavasana corpse pose. You can bend your legs, take your feet to the wall and gently press the feet into the wall to slide yourself away from the wall. And once you've done that, come to lying down on your mats. Before you go to Shavasana, briefly wrap your arms around your shins, hug the legs, 
close to the body to release the lower back. And then from here, go to happy baby's pose. Take your hands to your feet so that the feet are aiming towards the ceiling, the knees towards the floor. Roll a little bit to the left and to the right to relax the hips and the lower back. And then from here, bring yourself to Shavasana, corpse pose. You can use whatever support you'd like to have under the thighs, under the legs, over the thighs, under the head. If you want a blanket covering you, have it. Take a few moments to create a sense of space in this pose. Reach the legs a little bit away from the body. Feel the buttocks flesh going towards the heels. The arms as well can go a little bit away from the body. Close the eyes. The goal of Shavasana is to get the body to relax as much as possible without losing consciousness. So as you're resting here, very intentionally, very consciously, tell the body to let go. Begin with the face, as we did at the beginning of class. Relax the forehead, the eyebrows, the temples. Let your gaze go gently towards the body, away from the brain. Relax the cheeks, soften the jaw and the tongue. Release the tongue all the way to its root so there's no hardness in the throat or in the chest. Observe the connection of the breath with the body. The inhalation is more connected to the sympathetic nervous system the exhalation is more connected to the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is more activating. Parasympathetic is more calming and quieting. So let the exhalations be a little bit longer and more complete than the inhalations and observe that the body let go more as you do this. BKS Iyengar described Shavasana as one of the most difficult poses simply because of the fact that it's hard to maintain a sense of presence when the body is so relaxed. So maintain that sense of presence by observing all that's happening within the bounds of the skin. Softening continually letting go continually every time the mind begins to wander go back to the body and release go to the feet relax the toes the mounds of the feet feel the arches soften feel the heels release Bring your awareness to the ankles. Soften the ankles, the muscles around the ankles. Find space in the bones. Observe the shins, the musculature around the shins, the calves. Bring your awareness to the knees, behind the patella the kneecap, soften the ligaments and the tendons in that area. Observe the thighs. Relax the musculature so much that it feels as if the muscles are falling away from the bone. And where the legs meet the body, release there. Deep in the inner groins, soften. Feel the lower internal organs relaxing and settling towards the back half of the body.
Soften the muscles of the spine. Relax all of the muscles of the spine completely. Feel the musculature around the chest. Releasing and letting go. Relax the shoulders. Feel gravity pulling the collarbones slightly away from each other towards the floor. Relax the upper arms, the elbows, the forearms. Release the hands all the way to the fingertips. Let go completely. To begin to bring yourself out of Shavasana, let your inhalations be a little bit longer and fuller, and notice that your awareness goes more to the surface of the skin and outwards. Move the toes and the fingers to bring yourself back to the body. Bend your left leg, bend your right leg, and gently roll to your right side. Stay on your right side for a couple of breaths. If there's any strain in the back, bend the legs a little closer to the chest. And when you come up, press the hands into the floor. Use your arms to do the work to bring yourself up to sitting. Find a comfortable cross-legged position. Palms together to your chest. Thank you, and namaste.